And good morning and welcome back to Barcelona. We're here at Mobile World Congress on day four of our fantastic wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm joined by my fantastic co-hosts and the co-founders of theCUBE, Dave Vellante and John Furrier. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. We have a very special guest with us this morning as well, Andrew from IBM. We had cocktails in a castle this week. We did, didn't we? That was amazing, wasn't it? It really was amazing. How, how's the rest of the week been for you? I mean, I, it's such a frenetic show. It's so really intense. Um, but actually, I get to this. I'm, I'm kind of a little bit frustrated, if I'm honest, about some of the messaging and the things that have kind of been said at the show. This, we were in this kind of massive hype cycle at the moment around what, AI. And what I, what I kind of hype cycle could you, I'm, I don't I'm know here what to get, about. get things off my chest, if, that, if that's okay. Share, please share, please <laughs> share. Space for it. You're in a safe space. No one's listening, you can so say what whatever you, what, you want. What you, Unfettered opinion. <laughs> yeah, what are you, so what are you frustrated with? What's the big, um, what's no, the? I, I, so th there's this kind of magical one we're waving over the industry, right? Which is AI is going to fix all this stuff that's broken. It's going to radically reduce the cost of operations. It's going to uh, make all our experiences as, as mobile phone users, smartphone users, much, so much better. And yeah, I, I think there's a really big reality gap between the promise that's been told and where we are as an industry and what needs to happen to actually realize that outcome. Let's talk about that yeah, gap. Let's get What's into that. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> let's step into the gap. We've been on the edge, we're on the gap. Uh, so, so tell us more about that. What's missing? Yeah, so if you think about the, the simple things that you know, we would want to do with, um, with AI that would really change our world experience, right? I want to know why my social media post yesterday didn't make it. Right. Right. Um, Story it didn't my life. Work. <laughs> um, now, you could argue that was because of my content was really poor and it didn't, but more likely, uh, well, I'd say more likely because I think I like my content, um, <laughs> the network no was a problem. No bias involved at all. <laughs> <laughs> the network was a problem. So, so I would say into, into my little AI chatbot, right? Why was my Facebook experience terrible yesterday? Now, you think about what's necessary to get to the answer for that. Yeah. Right? And, and if you ask telcos, they say, we've got so much data, we've got, right, so, so my simple question, without a chatbot, can you answer that question right now? And the answer is they can. The problem is it takes them about four hours to do it. Right. And they so may not have a little too much latency there. It's a, there's, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of right, and, and, the, and the reason is, is, it, is it, you know, there's a lot of things. Was it the radio? Was it my Wi-Fi? Was it the phone? Was actually the, the connection to the social media site broken at that point in time in my town, which can happen, right? So there's, yeah. there's so many different areas where that that could play out. So that's kind of one. Let's park that problem, right, and say, do they have yeah. enough data? And the second part of it is, um, if I want to make it actually have teeth and do things, if I say I would like to increase capacity to the stadium for FC Barcelona by 20,000 spectators and make sure that all of the public transport's covered. And I want to do that for four hours, right? Mm -hmm. Again, if that's what I'm typing in, what has to happen today, that might be a, a three, four week process for most telcos today because they don't have the orchestration across their systems to go do that, right? Yeah. Uh, and so that's a ticket that goes to the transport guy, a ticket that goes to the radio guy. And there's, uh, uh, so you can imagine how how manual that process really is today. Right. And so well, Andrew, this is a big a good point. So we were just talking in our intro this morning uh, about the one trend at the show is, is that you get the telecom, fixed wireless, all the systems are great. It's the IT enterprise integration challenges that's, that's going on right now. Right. So notwithstanding the AI hype, there's a bottleneck around that transition and everyone's working hard to like integrate telco Yes. Into the enterprise, and 5G is right front and center. Private 5G is just kind of like not ready for prime time, or is it? What's your view on S IT integration with telecom? No, I, I think the IT piece is the piece that everybody hates doing because it's hard, <laughs> it's great. You know, if you tell, ask a telco, go put up another thousand towers, they know exactly how to do that, right? If right. you say, could you make these two systems work together and put an API in front of it? Ah, that, that really, that, right. yeah. So, you know, a lot of the work at IBM is, is kind of exactly that. Right? It's like, how do we make sure they've got the right data, they've got the right access to the data, they've got the right orchestration tools in place. And so all that prep work that's necessary to make all this stuff come together uh, is the hard work behind the scenes, right? But Andrew, I'm hearing, if I hear it correctly, tell me if, if, you, if, if, if I got this right, it's not a necessarily a data quality problem, it's facile access to that, that data and, and the lack of coherence in a timely manner and it's automation from and an orchestration standpoint. That's exactly standpoint. right. And, and so getting all these different data sources together is a, is a kind of fundamental. We want to be able to do 
I call the kind of mother of all queries, if you like, database queries that go across all these things so that you can answer those questions. Now, now the tools that come together for AI are very good at that and making associations, but you have to have all that brought in, right? Uh, okay. Is there, when you think about the big data days, um, when data was just, I mean, it was, the data quality was a nightmare, but organizations built teams with data pipelines and, and data engineers and quality engineers and analysts, and you know, now they, they've grown those pipelines and there's a lot of pain there, but the data quality got much, much better. I would imagine the IT shops within telcos probably did yep. the same thing, yep. but there's, it sounds like there's this other bastion uh, where that process hasn't occurred. Is, well, that, is there an analog here that, does that have to occur where you have it, to have it, it, people it, rolling well, up their sleeves and data scientists getting the data in order, or is it the case that yeah. the data quality is actually okay, it's just there's not a clear way to get to it? Well, right, I, th I think the data order, I, I think they have done a lot of, lot of work on that, and, and, and it, it's, it's more the union of things, right? So how do you associate X with Y, and, and then labeling. So take a simple thing like an address, so you, you find a field called address. Right, now, if you're not a network guy, you would say that that's probably the first line of a street address. Mm -hmm. If you're a network person, of course, that's the IP address. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, um, being able to use AI to kind of go in and, go and, and essentially relabel the data is a, a use case. So, having, if you like, got the data and, and reasonably well formatted, we, we can use AI to, let's say, curate it into a better place and then make it suitable so we can do compares, right? Because if I do compares about addresses, and I'm not even talking the same yeah. type of address, then right. you know, we're, we're, you know, we're <clears> off to something completely wrong. Well, that's interesting because AI should, should do that much better than previous. So if you would, previously you would use like really mundane mathematical approaches to, to, to solve that categorization problem, like support vector machines and right. you know, right. semantic indexing. and The you super know, sexy stuff. stuff. That, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but if I can then now apply AI, yeah. To do that, that work, that, that's that, a game that changer. Can do that, right? And, and to give you an example, in, in a, a non-network space, you know, if you run a quick serve restaurant chain and you want to know uh, how close are my suppliers to all of my quick serve restaurants and how long will it take them to drive a truck from their, you know, from the warehouse yeah. to my store, that's a really interesting problem. That you know, by bringing you know, very disparate data sets together, you can actually start solving. And, and to my point about my you know, social media posts, that's exactly the same kinds of disparate yeah. sources that have to come together to so do So are you a this. data guy or are you a networking guy? This was interesting, I, right? Because IBM obviously has a lot of analytics chops and you've got a lot of tooling here. So I'm curious as yeah. to how, it's, you're talking all about data and, yeah. and, and, and automation. How, does it, well, how do you interact with your data it's, colleagues? It's funny, isn't it? Yeah. So I've been at IBM three years. I joined as a network guy. <laughs> I think I've just absorbed all this data <laughs> stuff in the, in, in the process. Well, but your title says general manager of software networking. Is that, what is that? Is it data what, networking? What, yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> well, that, I mean, tell, it. tell us what you do. That's so, a, uh, that's a really, <laughs> it's a really interesting world we live in, right? Because if you're going to start a new business as we did and, and get yeah. IBM refocused on networking, I, you obviously don't want to do and solve problems that already been solved really well, right? So wh why would you go out and build a new router or a switch or something that's just already out there? Particularly in this world where, um, to your point, all the data and all the, 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 the AI and all of the programs are in the cloud. So um, as I joined IBM, we really wanted to solve a problem that we were almost creating for ourselves, which was as we put our customers on the hybrid cloud journey and moved all of the, their systems and, and everything into and between the clouds, we found that we broke the network in the process. Interesting. And the, and the network got broken because um, it was no longer under the control of the enterprise, right? It was no longer this yeah. physical thing that, that you could buy, buy dark fiber with and put a Cisco or Juniper router right. in and get Not it was end something, end. It, it was all virtual, right? Right. Yeah. So really our point in being uh, and focusing on networking business is to bring control back to this very disparate world that we now live in. Um, you know, every time I'd meet at- It feels like that could be a metaphor for a lot of things. It's just, yeah. <laughs> well, the thing, the thing is, it's a feature, it's a feature, not a bug, by the way. So hybrid has a lot of disparate components. You got to go public over across public networks. You're not going to have end-to-end -end control. You're going to need SLAs. You're going to need to have reliability. You do, and it's also about talent, right? So now I need an expert who understands AWS and Azure and Google, right. and they're all very, very different worlds. Um, and so 
we want to have a kind of normalized experience for our customers where as they deploy to the cloud, it doesn't matter which cloud they go to, the networking looks the same, the data um, is, is managed the same way, and the outcomes are the same, right? And it's control and visibility, is that That's right? That's exactly and, right. And, and then, that so where right. do you get the visibility? What, what part of IBM, or is that a partner ecosystem? Yeah, so, so since I joined, we've actually done four acquisitions now. Right. Uh, a couple of them are focused on, on visibility at, a, at an app level and at the network level. Take us through those. So, yeah. um, so for example, we acquired a company called Sev1. Sev1 were predominant um, authority on performance information for how applications actually run across the network. To answer that question, you know, is it the Wi-Fi that's broken? Is it the, the, device. the, the cloud yeah. the device? Is it the, the application itself? And, and be able to, or is it something up in the cloud? And be able to put System that story health. together. Yeah. Uh, and then essentially democratize that data. One of the things that um, the heads of networks will tell you, whenever a problem happens, they, they can't solve the problem because the phone call, the phone keeps ringing and you know, <laughs> some executive somewhere saying, why can't I do X or Y? So to democratize that data, here's all the applications, here, here's how they're sitting right now, this is the performance of them. Uh, and if they're down or they're broken, then this is what we're doing about it. And to have that data in real time, um, you know, to the earlier conversation, before you get to the AI, AI piece of it, um, is, is, is vastly important. Uh, and then secondly, to use a, some embedded AI technology to be able to predict what's going to happen and what's going to break. So, uh, observability sits under observability your umbrella? Observability of networks sits in my team, yeah, that's okay. exactly right. Uh, cool. yeah. So, uh, Andrew, we, you told us what you're frustrated about. What are you excited about? What's the, is anything surprised you this week? Any customer conversations you're having that are inspiring? I think, um, you know, telco-wise at the show, um, the other kind of other topic that's been happening is, is around APIs. Yeah. And around the API flying, is that, is that a word? Can I use that? Um, <laughs> it is now. It, <laughs> of, <laughs> of the networks themselves. And I, that to me is, the, is a really important step that you know, I, I think finally we're taking seriously as an industry because yeah, um, I totally agree. Unless and until we do that, we don't, to my software networking title, we don't have a fully programmable infrastructure and network. Right. I can't call a network and say, I want this amount of bandwidth, I want this type of service, and I want it for, so to my other example of turn on capacity for 20,000 spectators, well, how am I going to do that for each of the elements that are in the network? It's going to be an API, right? Right, uh, absolutely. And so, I am more hopeful this year um, that, that you know, when we've seen you know, a vast amount of progress being made, announcements and so on, I still think there's a long way to go, but we're starting to see those APIs trickle out in the industry, and, and that's really going to help reset what we do. Well, I want to bring up the API piece because we've been asking ourselves, where are the developers at? So, the app, the, what's the killer app for 5G? That's the question, next question. Two, where are the developers? Are they cloud developers, or are they already pre-existing developers? So, if the telco has more APIs, where, who's building what on what? So how do you guys see that? What's the vision of how you see the app developer market? Because there's not a lot of DevOps being discussed here. I mean, cloud's just the toe in the water it's for good, telcos. Good call out there, John. Where, right. is yeah. the where are the developers? Well, right, so. Oh, they're out there. <laughs> well, let's start, with, let's start <laughs> with the basics, right. Um, if you think about how the hyperscalers built their, their infrastructure, they built and consumed APIs for their own use, and then they published them and then the developers came. So they could do anything inside their world mm -hmm. by using APIs, so all their developers yeah. could assemble. So as we've acquired companies inside IBM, as an example, one of the most important things that we force uh, acquired companies to do, if you like, is to open up their infrastructure from an API perspective so that I can take those things and use them as components Absolutely. and build new products and new services. Yeah. Right. Customize your ecosystem. Customize the ecosystem. But yeah. It also means I can be wrong about a specific target uh, market, but I can be right broadly, and if I have the APIs, I can adjust and go off and, and, and say I want to be in this market. Um, and I'll give you an example, right? We, we launched More agility. A, right, yeah. we, we launched a global load balancer service um, in the cloud yep. um, you know, two weeks ago. And we did that because we said we've got all the APIs, we've got the structure for what we want to do, I want to adjust it this way. Now, to your question around, well, so are there, are there, are there developers out there? Well, yeah. if you think about it, when AWS first published a set of APIs and said come, come use this, you know, was there a developer community? And uh, there wasn't, right? right? But, but what happened was, people said, wouldn't it, if it's easier, smarter, cheaper yeah. to do it this way, then I'll do it. Well, so, I, to that point. That's the, kind of the solution the for developers really, were, the yeah, yeah, yeah. The developers <laughs> were out there and they're saying, wow, my choice is build a data center and use the cloud. Right. So boom, they go there, better mouse trap, okay, they go there. Here, yeah. the developers are like, okay, I got Llama, yep. open source, 
So they see them out there, but they're not thinking, oh, I'm going to go program on AT&T or Verizon. Well, they're right. like, they're not thinking like, that's my home. Right. So you say, okay, <laughs> we heard from Qualcomm the same thing, but they're out there, so they're going to build apps. They got to run on something. Yeah. So well, like. <laughs> well, right. But to, to that to that AWS analogy, right? Build your own network, or yeah, go into the cloud and do it. Right? I mean, it's, right. it's that. Now go back to my, you know, network managers have lost control of their network. If I can now go build myself a global network and infrastructure through the use of APIs of maybe not just one but multiple telcos around the world. And by the way, we'll come back to that issue in a second. Yeah. Um, it, it it what it means is that. I don't have to worry about whether that uh, infrastructure is going to perform. I don't have to go out and, and form contracts with every single one of those SLAs and then manage so them. risking yourself essentially, because yeah. Because that's right. Yeah. So, so that opening up, you know, it, it, I think about every enterprise on the planet wants to think that that, that global network they're renting yeah. uh, is under their control and management. And I, I think that's the destination of where these APIs go because it enable, should enable you to be able to do that. So, uh, we're just seeing the bit parts of it. So while to your point, I, I can go to ATT <laughs> Verizon and say, I want this circuit with this API with, and, and use this amount of bandwidth, it doesn't sound particularly interesting. Go, go stitch it together globally, then I think it does. Andrew, right? let me ask you a question. So, okay, we love APIs, by the way, so we love that. Good comment. So I mean, the Great question comment. is, what's the relation, in your opinion, what's the relation between APIs and foundation models? LLMs is just large language models, but you got graphics, multimodal, so we'll say foundation, AI models. Yep. What's the relationship? Are APIs going to be the plumbing for models? I, What's your vision on this? I, I regard the APIs as the teeth, actually, for AI. Let me explain that. Because they can't actually do anything. They're powerless unless they can uh, get to the data as we discussed or program the infrastructure behind it. Yeah. So what that means is, in, in Intelco land, right, all those chatbots are going to do is ample, it's a simple question. It's like, why Andrew's bill is $20 more this month, right? That's, I mean, you know, what, yeah. do I need AI to do that? I'm not sure. Um, versus totally agree with find you out there. why my experience was terrible, right? Yeah. And, 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 and that is the, how you bring the APIs together with AI because that's the teeth that, that APIs they use. are eating AI. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the takeaway from this. API, <laughs> no, I love that because it's true. You need the APIs to program the DevOps, yep. program the resources, and it's generative, so things are happening, they're running, they're generating, which is assembling resource. Right or managing resource. Exactly. Wow. I, you have had so many fantastic sound bites, Andrew. I'm so glad we got you on the show this morning. We could talk forever, but unfortunately, we're going to have to wrap this one up. Last question for you. What do you hope you can tell us when you're sitting on this lovely desk with us next year? I would like to tell you about all the fantastic customers that are starting to use this technology, the APIs, <laughs> the AI, and how it's actually the coming together. The, yeah. the use cases and, the, and how it's actually worked. And, and maybe a little bit of sadness about what didn't work. I mean, that, that's, that's always how much how we learn, right? Yes, hopefully less frustration for you next time we get the opportunity to chat. Thank you again for being with us. John, Dave, thank you both for being on my sides. And thank you for tuning in from wherever you are consuming this fantastic content. My name's Savannah Peterson, live here in Barcelona at MWC. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech coverage. Mm -hmm.